You've been chasing him since the war began. A tyrant with a face no one has ever seen. Every day under his rule comes with more and more atrocities. And as a war photographer, you are willing to do almost anything to bring him down. Even dating him. You are dragged through an exquisite mansion by two armed guards and tossed before the man you've been chasing for years now, the monster with no name. He looks down at you from what almost looks like a throne. Ah, my little photographer. After all this time, I finally get to speak with you. Face to face. What do you think, dear? You're finally seeing me with no mask. Was it worth the build-up? <laughs> yes, yes, business first. Let us satisfy your quest first so you can relax. Go on, get your little camera. Do be sure to capture my good side, won't you? The man before you, a man responsible for thousands of casualties, tilts his head and lets you photograph him at your leisure. There you are. A face to put over the atrocity. A face you've been chasing for years. Is it everything? That you expected, my little photographer. <laughs> Your reporter friend. Oh, right, right, right. Yes. I believe we're having him tortured this afternoon. <laughs> I think that's the 20th time someone has shouted, You're a monster at me today. Oh, but you do it with such conviction. You still have some fight to you. And that is something that I absolutely adore about you, my dear. I know who you are, my dear. Being in my position comes with many perks, and one such perk is information. So when a beautiful creature crashes a poker game just to try and bring me to justice, I take notice. Hmm, that was three years ago. You're so right, my dear. Three years on the dot, actually. (laughs) Happy anniversary, baby. Don't worry about forgetting. I know we're still in the honeymoon phase. (laughs) I think we are a couple. I really do. We've been chasing each other for years. We send each other little gifts. Are assassinations not considered gifts any longer? Hmm. Perhaps I'm out of touch. Regardless. I believe my point still stands, and if it doesn't, then I'd like to propose something. Guards, leave us, if you'd please. I'd like some time alone with my darling. The guards exchange looks, but obediently shuffle out, leaving you with him. Now, can you stand? Good. Here, my hand. There we are. Mind all the rings. They really are garish, aren't they? I never know what to do with all the damned baubles people throw at me as they plead for their lives. I decided I'd see how many I could fit on one hand. Twelve is the answer. That gold one on my middle finger is a bit on the stucky side. Hmm? Hmm? What do I want with you? Well, first, any food allergies? 
preference on proteins? Have you had samosas recently? I'm having dinner prepared for us, my sweet. After all, it's the first time you've been home in uh, six months. Or are we going to ignore the time you scurried about in my vents trying to find all that icky, nasty intelligence in that boorish little briefcase? Just leaning a bit closer, my dear. Why are you shaking? No, 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 no. I'd never hurt you. How could I? You become like a stray cat that scampers by every so often. You hiss and spit and claw and bite. I still can't help but be fond of you. I can't help wanting to pick you up and snuggle you and feed you until I'm your favorite human. Your only human. I am the worst. I know. Bit of hair in your face, look. Bloop. Huh? Got it. Now, what were you saying? Something about me being the devil incarnate. You give it your all, trying to break through to this tyrant, this monster. But his eyes are fogged over and a dopey smile lingers on his lips. Mm. Here, have a seat at the table. Don't mind the dogs. I promise they're good boys. Hmm, I knew you'd be an animal lover. You're so precious and good. Is that why you're fascinated by me? Oh, <laughs> Of course, you want to make the world more aware of me, so I'll be brought to justice for my crime. So smart, sweet thing, so smart. <sighs> you don't appreciate me staring at you. But I can't help it, sweetheart. All I've had for several years now is pictures of you. They just don't compare to the real thing. Mm. Mm. How did I get pictures of you? Oh. You can do a lot of things when you're as rich as I am. You've got a private investigator with the skills of Sherlock Holmes and the persistence of a bloodhound. Yeah, he found out all about you. Took him a few months. Very impressive. He's usually done in three days, but you... You gave him a hell of a fight, my sweet. Mm. <laughs> really? You're going to lecture me for invading your promise as a war photographer? <sighs> he looks at you as you stand and hurl your wine glass to the ground and scream at him. Go off on him. Scream. Once you're finally done, he takes another sip of wine. Hmm. Hmm, that was quite the explosive rant. You've seen such horrifying things that you assume fall solely at my feet. Now tell me, what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh, and then you'd have a rogue militia out there breeding child soldiers and burning homes to the ground to stir up fear. They'd rally, I'd fall, be dragged out as an example, and then whoever led the militia will be seen as a hero for six months, and then they become an even worse tyrant because of all that love and attention would begin to slip. Paranoia would set in. Dissenters would rise. And well, the merry-go-round would continue. Ah, <sighs> it pisses you off that I'm right, doesn't it? You're not stupid, my little sleuth. You know what a power vacuum looks like. 
and you know, for however horrendous my crimes are, the next in line will be even worse. We tyrants always have big boots to fill, you see. We can't be less bad than our predecessors because it defeats the entire purpose of rising up. You need to be the boogeyman. The final fucking exit. The last stop before hell. Such is life, I suppose. Sit down, my dear. Let us negotiate. There we are. Now, you have something I desperately want. More than anything. More than my next meal. Or walking with my pretty dogs. And I think you know what I mean. Yeah. You. Hmm. Must be exciting to have some power over one of the most dangerous men on the planet, huh? <laughs> oh, of course. You find me repulsive, of course. You write about me so provocatively. We are both obsessed. Let us not pretend. My obsession is just more lustful, romantic, desperate, wanton, raging need. It's Rhett. My name. You only know me under my various nicknames. And you've been trying to find out my real name for years, yeah? Consider this me showing vulnerability in good faith. See? If you agree to be with me with minimal resistance, you may very well get all you need to bring me down one day. <laughs> Isn't that your greatest desire, my love? To see me absolutely destroyed and brought to justice. What more could you want? You want me to release your friend without harm, hmm? You're making me jealous, darling. Do I need to be concerned about him having your heart? Oh, he's already married. Wonderful. Thank you for settling my fears, darling. You're so considerate. Such a great communicator. Mm. This lobster is excellent. You should really should try it. Fine. I'll have him released, untortured and unharmed after supper. Is he afraid of pit bulls? Tremendously, you say. Well, then I'm sure the pity pit crew would love. Fine. You're worth not spooking someone to the point of pissing their pants. Would you pass the butter, please? Thank you, lovely. So nice to have you home for supper after so long. <laughs> 